everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk all about my wound I got from surgery. Now, this topic has been one that I've talked about the most on my Instagram, that I've talked about most during my recovery. It's just been something that's really been a huge part of my life for these past like six weeks. Now, before I go any further in this, I just wanna state it is nothing my surgeon did wrong. It's nothing that he did or had happened during surgery. It's nothing that I did wrong for recovery. It's something that happens from surgery. Um, one of the side effects of skin removal surgery, of any surgery, really, where your skin, there's trauma to the body, and this can happen. Um, the skin on my legs was so loose, and it's not, how do you say it? It's like really thin, so trauma and things like this are can happen easier, and that's what happened. Um, so now we can continue. I just had to get that out of the way before we keep going. So if you kind of want to see a little bit more about my recovery or more pictures or any of that, make sure you're following my Instagram, Facebook, all that. I'll leave links down below um, if you want to kind of check out more of like how recovery has been going for me. Um, I also have some other videos here if you want to check it out. But in this video, I really just want to talk about the wound. Um, I feel like it's something I get asked about a lot. It's really what I'm dealing with now at this point and something that I've never experienced before. And to be honest, it really took me to a really dark place. And it's definitely been something I think I've been dealing with a little bit of like depression while I've been in recovery because of this wound. Um, so I'm gonna take you back to the very beginning and kind of fill you in all the way up to where we are now. So if you wanna know more about my surgery or what exactly I had done, I'll leave a link up at top or down below that you can click to kind of watch more about my surgery. But pretty much I got home, everything went well, and the first day, like I think it was three days after surgery, I was allowed to shower. And so I took all the bandages, wrap, gauze, everything off my legs, was getting ready to shower. And on my right leg, under my incision, kind of a little bit above my knee and then like the whole thigh area, there was a few like little blisters under the incision. And so I called my surgeon right away. I was freaking out, almost passed out. It was almost a huge whole ordeal. And he said, it's fine. Just we'll keep our eye on it. Just shower. We'll check it in the next few days and see what happens. So took a shower, was fine. Put the wraps back on, was fine. A little worried, but was not a big deal. And then the next time when I went to shower, I think it was the next day or the day after that, the blister was a lot bigger. And so instead of a lot of little blisters, it was like one big blister, um, which again was right above my knee, on my inner part of my thigh. And then there was another one kind of up a little bit like towards my groin area, not as big, but still kind of big. Um, just looked like normal kind of big blisters. Um, again, was told, let's just keep our eyes on it, showered, <laughs> was kind of freaked out about it, but was fine. Again, a few days later, saw the blisters. They weren't really getting bigger, but they were changing color. So they went from kind of like a clear, kind of blistery to like almost like dark red, black blistery. <laughs> I saw it immediately, passed out, was freaking out, hysterically crying. And I feel like at this point, it was kind of a turning point in my recovery where it quickly started to spiral downhill. Where up to this point, I was pretty positive, dealing with the pain, thinking, okay, we're gonna, you know, this is all gonna be okay, it's fine, to what is going on with my leg because I knew this was not normal. Um, and so my surgeon actually came over, checked it out, and I could tell on his face he was a little concerned, but with how much I was freaking out and passing out and <laughs> really not okay, I think he didn't really wanna like freak me out. So he's pretty much was just like, let's keep our eye on it, but this might be an area of concern that we have to take care of. Um, and so then the blister ended up popping and then my surgeon removed kind of like the skin of the blister after it popped 
and it kind of looked like underneath that the skin might be healing. Um, and like new skin could form and it didn't really look that bad. So we thought that it was just a blister and that the skin underneath the blister might heal. Um, we talked about the possible side effects of maybe if it didn't heal, that he would have to maybe remove that area, cut out the skin. Um, but at this point, and for like about a week, it looked like it was kind of healing. And I remember during this time, I was in full on <laughs> depression mode. I was crying every single day couldn't like even want to didn't even want to like get out of bed people were saying it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine I was like it's not gonna be fine nothing is fine about this it's not okay I'm not okay and it was just a very hard time for me um which is not like me because I'm happy positive find the good in every situation and this was just I was <laughs> down for the count and nothing felt like it could get worse in my life um and so it was kind of mentally really hard because I didn't know what was happening with my leg or this area, but also I didn't know what was happening inside of myself, why I couldn't just be like my positive self, like, you know what, this sucks, but I'm gonna handle it. Like, my surgeon's amazing, he's gonna handle it, it's fine. Like, I couldn't snap myself out of it. And it was literally crying every moment of every hour of every day for this week, wondering if it's gonna heal on its own. Well, ended up not healing on its own, and my surgeon ended up having to cut the area of the skin off. So pretty much what it is, is it's a skin necrosis, where part of the skin died from surgery. So what he had to do is I went in his office, and he it, what pretty much happened is it turned like black and really hard. So he took like special scissors and cut out the area of like where the blister was, like where it formed like a hole, <laughs> um, cut the hard skin off and it was left with just like your flesh, like your inside, like part of your body without skin. He had to like kind of scrape it a little bit to kind of get all the yucky off. So he had to do it with the top part, the little part and the big part. So it wasn't very deep, which I was very fortunate about. It was very superficial, so he didn't really have to scrape very deep where it's like a big, open, deep hole. Um, but it was still, because of the size of it, a pretty good wound. Um, so not necessarily that deep, but pretty big. Um, and like I said, I have two spots that are pretty big for something like this, but very thankful it wasn't very deep. So we started doing wound care and dressing changes. So pretty much three times a day, you have to wet gauze with saline, pack it inside the hole, put dry gauze, wrap it up, and do that three times a day, and then change it. And then every day shower, run the water really inside like the wounds, get it nice and clean, dry it, and then pack it and do all of that again. Um, he was never concerned with like, that it looked infected or that I had to get on antibiotics. It was pretty good for a wound. Um, and I'm so thankful that Kevin was with me, he's my fiance, that he changed it for me. Because those, like, looking at it for me made me pass out. Um, I even had him take a picture of it right after it happened before I could look at it on myself so I could like prepare myself for what it was gonna look like. Um, so it, it was hard. <laughs> and I think when it's something like that on your body, it's a lot different than if you see it like on someone else. So. For other people to say like, oh, that doesn't look that bad, or oh my gosh, you know, that's not that deep, or, you know, oh, having a skin necrosis isn't that bad of a thing, or oh my gosh, it's going to heal. I was pretty much like, shut up, it couldn't get worse than this. You don't know what you're talking about. Stop saying that to me, because this is really bad. <laughs> so I think mentally that was really hard for me during this whole wound process. Um, not only being able to like look at it myself and to see it on myself, 
but to not like rip everyone's head off who told me you're so lucky that it's not worse than this. Um, so that was really hard. Showering was really hard. I passed out a bunch of times, um, hysterically crying a bunch of times, and really kind of, it was a dark place. Like, I was really in a dark place for a while, and my surgeon knew it. He's been amazing during this whole process. He's just amazing, but when you have something like this happen, I think it really makes you see people in a different light on how they're going to take care of you. And if I didn't think he was the best person in the whole world before all this, like, I definitely think that now because just the care and the love and the support that he's shown has been amazing. So my surgeon actually recommended I go see a wound specialist just to have them check it out um, and see if they can, like, give any tips to help it kind of heal faster. Um, so I went and saw her. Again, super amazing. I was really nervous because, again, the look, like, seeing this wound makes me pass out. So I told her, she walked in, I was like, before you take anything off or look at anything, I'm not okay. I'm not okay with this wound. I'm not okay looking at this wound. And I'm very emotional and upset about it. So I'm just giving you a heads up. And she's just like, okay, it's, you're gonna be okay. Let's check it out. She checked it out no infection, everything looked great, and we kind of switched our way of taking care of it to a thing, it's called Mepitel 1, and it's kind of like a band-aid looking sheet thing that has little holes in it, and it acts as like your skin, because you don't have any. <laughs> so you put it over your wound, and you put this special honey, which is called Meta Honey, on top of it, and that helps pull bacteria out, keep it clean, and kind of to promote new skin growth. So you do that, you leave that on for three days, you change the honey every day when you shower, and then you peel the little sheet off every third day. That was working really well. We did that for about two weeks. The wound definitely shrunk in size. And again, no infection, everything looked great, was healing great. Um, so then when I saw her again, and by this point it's been kind of like, three weeks, almost four weeks of having like this open wound and I'm finally getting to a point where I'm getting okay with it. Um, it took me a while to kind of accept it, be okay with it, embrace it, and to tell myself you're healing and it's okay. Um, so now I'm kind of at a point where it's kind of still really gross, um, but I'm okay, I'm getting okay with it. Um, every day I'll kind of rub it and be like, you're doing a great job, you're healing, you're going to be okay, I'm strong, I got this, I can handle it. And every day I feel myself standing back up and digging myself out of that dark hole I was in for a while. But with that being said, the wounds I have are still very big, even though they are shrinking and looking a lot better. So I saw my wound specialist again and she recommended I have a skin graft to close the wound a lot faster. It'll help not only close it but prevent infection and we're not going to have to wait maybe months for it to close on its own. She told me to go talk to my surgeon, see what he thinks. We can all get on the same game plan page um, and go from there. So I just saw my surgeon and he's in agreement that in his opinion a skin graft is what's best for me which I think I'm a little relieved because it's gonna heal this thing and close it very quickly. But at the same time, the thought of having like another surgery to kind of have to go through and deal with really sucks and is mentally kind of hard for me to kind of accept. Um, but I have decided that I am gonna go ahead and have a skin graft to close this area. We're either gonna be taking it from my stomach or my hip to kind of close the big one and then the one at the top because it's kind of big but it's long and skinny so there's like enough play like in the skin like he can pinch it closed and sew it up so the smaller one that's up at top more that's what he's gonna do and then the bigger one near my knee we're gonna have a skin graft um that's gonna be happening what's the date so that's gonna be happening pretty quickly on wednesday the 15th um just so we can get this thing closed and healed and I can kind of move on with life. Um, 
So it's about a two hour surgery. Uh, I get to come home right away. And pretty much what he said is it's gonna look really bad before it gets better. Um, so in for a full week, I have to keep the part with the graft completely covered in the special stuff he's wrapping it. After a week, we'll open it up and he'll see if the skin graft fully took or not. Um, but he did warn me already like it's gonna look pretty nasty until it heals. But within like two or three weeks, it should look drastically almost healed. Um, and for some reason, if it doesn't take, like the skin graft doesn't take, then we can move on from there and figure out what we do. Um, but I'm not even going to think of that. I'm positive the skin graft's going to take and everything's just going to heal. And within a week, this thing's going to be closed and it's just a recovery process. Um, so that's <laughs> where we are. That's up to date speed with this wound. Um, if you do want to kind of see pictures of it, I know I've gotten hundreds of messages from people wanting to see the whole process and what the wound looks like. I'm going to be posting that to Instagram, so make sure you're following me or go check it out if you want to see it. It will, of course, have a disc viewer discretion advised over it, and then you can swipe through to kind of see. Um, but I think it's kind of important to share this step and this process, too. Because for me, I think if I were kind of getting ready to go through surgery or dealing with something like this, having this information or seeing someone else go through it, what they're doing, their struggles, their challenges would be very helpful to me. Um, so that's why I kind of want to share it with all of you. Um, so again, I'm warning you, if you do go look at those pictures, if you have a weak stomach, maybe not go look at it. Um, but just wanted to share it with you guys. So that's it. That's all. I'll of course be filling you guys in on how that surgery goes, recovery goes. This wound is just, I swear, I'm gonna, I better be so strong after this because this has been brutal going through this, but I'm tough. I found my spunk again and I'm tough. I'll get through this. Um, sometimes you have to take a few steps back in order to really zoom forward and I've taken many steps back, so I know it's only up from here. But thank you all so much for your love and support. I know I say that a lot, but it truly, really does help tremendously. Um, and I can't thank you enough. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. This journey has been hard. Recovery, even harder this time. Um, but I know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? And I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be like Superwoman after this. I'm going to be so strong. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like this content, if you want to see more content related to surgery, recovery, the wound, and I can make more videos and stuff with that as well. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any more of my videos. And I will talk to you guys all very soon. Bye! -bye.